All right, let's take a look at finding uh, problems that are listed as part of homework. So here we have, uh, we're in D2L, the gross income section, and it tells you to see Cengage now, in which case uh, you can go into Cengage and click on Chapter 2, Part 1. Now those homework problems are actually based on 2020 as opposed to 2021. But for especially for gross income, it's going to be the same anyways. And so if you want to do that, you can. However, um, just realize that sometimes if you get to something where they're asking you for a tax liability or something along that line or something where you have to subtract a, out standard deductions which are different from 2020 to 2021 you're going to need to remember that when you get to the exam you know when you're in Cengage you're going to use the 2020 book if you're doing the problems on Cengage now in the exam, you need to use 2021, 2021 forms from the IRS, 2021 uh, instruction booklet from the IRS. Uh, the 2021 uh, questions are in the 40th edition of the book, which is available to you. And so you can, instead of doing Chapter 2, Part 1 on Cengage, which is the 2020 stuff, you can go ahead into the 40th edition of the book, and here are the problems you have to do. You can put your answers on Word or Excel and upload here, and, um, and that would be acceptable as well. So if you want to make sure that you're practicing the 2021 stuff and using the book that you really should be using, then you can do that. But it's, it's okay if you want to do homework chapter two, part one, uh, using the 2020 stuff. And the same holds for homework chapter two, part two. You can just go ahead and see Cengage now and do chapter two, part two, understanding that it's all 2020 stuff. Alternatively, you can do these following using the 2021 book and do those on Word or Excel and upload those. So either way that you want, just keep in mind uh, that when you get to the exam, you have to do 2021 stuff. Also, when I have you do tax return stuff, so here for Chapter 2, Part 3, it doesn't give you the option of doing it on Cengage. You have to use the 2021 book and put your answers on Word or Excel and upload them here. Chapter 2, Part 4, okay, is um, the tax return stuff. So you have a short answer problem from the group 2 problems, number 21, in the back of Chapter 2. But you're going to go ahead and complete a tax return using that information, including a qualified dividends worksheet from the IRS instructions and assume they also had 50,000 in wages. Make up any information you need, okay? And so you're gonna um, do a tax return for this and upload it. Then secondly, you have to do tax return problem number one and number two B. These would be in the back of chapter two and it tells you you have to use the 2021 40th edition book. So, where can we get a hold of this stuff for doing these two homework problems? Go to Cengage now, and if you're in the Assignments tab, this is what you might be looking at here. And if you go, however, to the Study Tools, 
you see uh, the book, and the book that it brings up first is the 39th edition, which is for 2020. So you will want to down arrow, you'll want to go down to the 40th edition, and then you can click on ebook. Okay, and here is chapter two. Okay, the other thing you can do over to the right hand side, there's a little blue book and you can click on that and go in chapter two. Either way will take you to this spot right here. At the back, at the bottom of chapter two, there's group one problems, which are the multiple choice questions. Group two, which are like short answer problems. Group three, which are writing assignments, which I generally don't use. And group four, which is comprehensive problems. These are the tax return problems. So, on homework chapter two, part three, you need multiple choice number 15 and 34, and the short answer, group two problems 14 and 34. So I'm gonna go into group one, multiple choice questions. And here's number 15. So there is the question. Here are the answer possibilities. So if you decided that answer C was the correct answer, you would put, type that onto your Excel uh, or your Word document, you would say, multiple choice, number 15, answer is C, okay? Um, and then you had to do number 34, which is here. Next section are the group two short answer problems. You need to do number 14 and 34. So again, you just scroll down. Here's number 14. Now this is where you had to do a simplified method worksheet, which is what we do for annuities, uh, annuity income. And so there's no way to type right on there. If you can print this out, that's great. There's also, this exists as a worksheet in the IRS instruction booklet. You can print out that page from that and hand write on it and upload a picture of your thing absolutely cannot do anything else then go ahead and take your piece of paper and write down one two three four five six seven eight nine and put in whatever numbers that you have for each of those lines all right chapter uh, two part four was the tax return problems the comprehensive problems you were told to do number one and, um, and then number uh, I think it was 2B okay and so here it tells you some information about uh, the couple they've been married and uh, they tell you you know their birth date so you can see if they're under or over age 65, so you know if they need an extra standard deduction. Okay, here is Donna's uh, W-2 form. So um, everything is there. Here's Chris's W-2 form, everything is there. They tell you that they have interest income of $1,000 on Erith County, Texas bonds. Okay, this should dig up, our bell should be ringing. This is a local government in Texas bonds. So that should bring some bells about that $1,000. Tana and Chris also received the following 1099 INT and 1099 uh, DIV. So here's the 1099 INT, they got $660 of taxable interest income. Here is the 1099 DIV. 
and they have total ordinary dividends of 312 and all of the dividends are qualified dividends. They give you some additional information down here and they finalize it by telling you that Donna and Chris received a $2,800 EIP in 2021. Okay, this EIP is the stimulus check. So each Donna and Chris must have received $1,400. And you have to determine, was that all they should have received? If they should have received more than $2,800 for the two of them, then you need to use line 30 in your tax return to show the extra that they should have gotten. If that's everything they should have gotten, then you don't put anything on line 30 of the tax return. Okay, and then you would go on down into the next one. Um, okay. And... That should do it. Let's see. All right. Once you once the due date has passed, then uh, the answers will be uploaded, and you'll be able to see the answers to these. Hopefully, that helps you out. You can also, um, this book here, um, here's chapter two, and you can read anything from this book and know that it would be 2021. At the, at the bottom of the chapters under appendix A is the ta tax rate schedules and the tax table for 2021. I believe because the book was published kind of late that these are probably correct. But if you don't want to take a chance, you should use the IRS tax tables. So here's the 1040 instruction booklet. And if you go into the table of contents, there's the 2021 tax table. And um, if it were me, I would want to print out at least the tax table itself, those handful of pages, and have that printed out and sitting near me when I'm doing tax returns rather than having to have it up on the screen and what if you end up with some kind of internet problem, whatever. Okay, so uh, that would be me, however. Okay, and technically, whatever answer is in the IRS booklet, that's the answer I'm going to be looking for on an exam tax return problem. So if you don't want to take a chance that Cengage maybe wasn't entirely correct, then you should definitely use the instruction book. Also, um, various things like, let's say, the rebate, recovery rebate, okay, if you go into uh, tax and credits and you scroll on down until past all these other credits. The recovery rebate credit is one of the last ones. So line 30, recovery rebate credit. So here's some information about it. And here is a recovery rebate credit worksheet. So you could actually go through this worksheet and see if, um, if you needed to put something on line 30 